In this video, we are going to do a tone tutorial that's going to be a little bit different. We're going to be aimed towards a Fender amp type instead of a specific artist's sound. And what I mean is we're going to take a clean twin sneaky amp and make it sound like an authentic Fender twin reverb. Now, in order to do that, you have to download in the description the sneaky amp live sets I've put down there. And I'll explain what those are in a second if you don't know. And then load the clean twin up into an empty slot, and then we'll go from there. Before you do that, let me explain sneaky amps. So a long time ago, Roland created some COSM software that was used for such things as the GT100, which is an amp modeler, whereas the Katana is not an amp modeler. So the GT100, if I'm not mistaken, that's where it was based, but I'm, I'm probably wrong. But they've also used it with the Roland Cube. So these sneaky amps were essentially amps that you could load into the GT100. And someone had found a way to use them with the Katana. Because it's it's they used that same software to build the Katana software. So that's the gist of it. If you want to know more about that, I'll put a link down in the description. And you can read up on that some more. Now, this one, I'm also going to do a little bit different. Whereas I'm not starting with a completely sterile tone. I've got the sneaky amp already loaded and I just turned off the effects. So we're just going to go through and we're going to turn them on and I'm going to show you and we're going to see what it sounds like from there. So if you want to pause it for just a moment and download the sneaky amp and get it all loaded up and ready to go, go for it. Well, otherwise, you can just download the patch down there that's called uh, Fender Twin Verb and do it the lazy way. But if not, let's get into it. So I've got the clean twin patch loaded into my katana and I've got the effects completely turned off. So what it's, it's going to look like since it's a clean patch, it's going to load as a clean amp. And then I bumped the gain up to about 57 and I've got the chain on 3-1. It doesn't really matter because I don't have any kind of boost, but you can play with a boost and we can do that a little later. But I just leave it at like maybe 3-1 in case you want to throw a modern effects there. And if you want to throw a compressor before the boost, you can do that too by using one of these down here. So I got the volume up to about 82, the bass set at 70, the mids, I just kept it right at 50, and the treble at 62. Over here, since it's supposed to be a twin reverb amp, I've got the cabinet resonant set at vintage and the presence at about 72 to make it a little chimey. As I said before, I have no boost on there, but we can play with that a little bit later because it's, it's a really cool sound. So the first thing we're gonna do is, let's, let's play it and just see how it sounds without and I'm going to show you how all this would sound if you didn't use the sneaky amps and you just uh, just use the regular clean amp to it and you'll notice the difference so this is our clean twin sound without any effects doesn't sound too bad let me put it on the neck pickup so it sounds a little creamier today I'm using this Squire Classic Vibes 50 Telecaster Butterscotch Blonde I love this guitar. So here's our clean sound. Sounds pretty good so far. Totally dry signal, so let's add our parametric EQ. Now, the parametric EQ is my go-to EQ, as always. 7, 40, 250, but here instead of minus 2, I bumped up the low mid gain just a bit to give you that a, a little more bass to it. Over here, I do have the high mid frequency at 1.6, and the decibels are a little higher than I normally go. I got them at uh, plus 5 on those and plus 5 on the high gain, and I did dial back from 5 to 4 so it's not so uh, so trebly. And then I had the level bumped up right to five. So let's uh, let's kick it on. It's going to be a, a, a big difference. I'm not a big clean player, and I don't improvise very well. So you're just going to have to deal with some crappy noodling. So we got that set. We got one more to go, and then we can play around over the reverb. I just got it on a simple spring reverb, and I've got the reverb time at 1.3, 26 milliseconds. I kept these just as what they were when I opened it up, density at 5, and the effect level at 20, just to give us just enough reverb to make it sound like a nice twin reverb. Now, you're not going to be able to hear this as well 
like through this recording and how good it actually sounds until you unplug and hear it out of the speaker. And even then, if you want to really play with that hack that people call it of using the master cranked and the volume, you know, as your uh, level, you can do that too, and you will notice a significant volume boost in that. And that's all I really think it is. I don't think it's, uh, you know, it doesn't add the, the tube dynamics of it, in my opinion. But I notice when you have the master cranked and you use that volume as a level, as a master volume, uh, you don't have to turn it up as high to get a loud volume, just sort of like most tube amps. Now, if you use just the opposite, and you have that volume on the amp cranked and the master volume, you have to turn it up significantly more in order to get that sound. But if you put it on 100 and turn up that master volume with this, it's going to sound really deep. So here we are. That's your basic sound. You plug that through the uh, speaker, and it's going to sound very similar to a Fender Twin Reverb. Now, if you have the 50, it's going to sound a little thinner, that's just how the speaker in the 50 is. You may be able to go over to the parametric EQ and turn up the low gains and play a little bit with the low cut and mid frequencies in order to get a, a, a deeper resonance sound of a powerful tube amp. One more thing about these sneaky amps now. If you've got the sneaky amp and you're playing with it, let's turn that mod off, and you change the amp type, you go back to it it's just going to revert back to a regular clean amp so if you have a patch that you're playing with that you've downloaded from somebody else and you just happen to change the amp type and you try to go back and it sounds completely different chances are it was built upon a sneaky amp now let's hear the difference between the sneaky amp clean and the same settings on the regular clean amp type. Sneaky amp. Regular clean amp. So you can hear that difference. So there's just something within the coding of that GT100 software that they did to model these different amps. So here we go. It's a great clean platform to use now if you want to add a booster to it here's the fun part you can add just about any overdrive to this and it's going to sound fantastic it's a bit loud though let's turn the volume on this down just a little bit so when we're using it it's you got overdrive, you can use natural overdrive, which also sounds great, but you can play around with all these overdrives. And if you want to push it, crank up the gain on this thing. So you're just on the edge of breakup, maybe. And then put it on the tube screen, or turn that drive down, and use it as a boost. I mean, you can just use just about any of them. The governor, you might want to turn that down. Turn that gain down. What do we have at about 57? And crank that drive up and hear that governor through it. But you can play with this all day. This is a great basic twin reverb platform to work with there's a, a tone on the spark called pure fender tone and it sounds really good and you add like a, a plexi distortion to it oh and it just i love it you can actually see that in one of the videos i did a while back for the spark one of the few videos i did for the spark now if you wanted to just turn off the boost let's turn this up just a little bit and play with just about anything on here want to add some chorus to it let's add some chorus to it See how it sounds. Turn it 
to wrap it up, this is a great platform to use to start with to kind of build uh, other tones around, other clean tones around, and you can really add to it, add some delay, play around with the mod effects, and make it your own thing. But I think it just sounds really great as a nice, clean starter amp where you can just build off of it. To close it out, if you like this video, please hit that like button for me. I really appreciate it. And if you're not already a subscriber, hit that subscribe button and I'll keep the videos coming. We'll see you next time.